Do you ever wish that certain things didn't bother you quite as much as they do? Do you ever envy those kinds of people who seem to be able to take whatever life has for them, if it's criticism, if it's failure, if it's hardship, if it's struggle, if it's pain or whatever it is, and they just seem to be able to let those things roll off their back and not get affected by them and not get upset by them and they just seem to kind of shrug their shoulders and say, oh well, and keep going. Those people that seem to be so mentally tough that nothing seems to phase them. Well, if you're like me, you are not one of those people. But today we're actually going to talk about three ways that we can build more mental toughness. Not so that things don't impact us at all, because if you're like me and you are a more highly sensitive person, things are going to affect you. That... Things are going to impact you, but we can learn how to not let them impact us quite as much. And we can also learn how to get back up a lot more easily when we get knocked down. Stay tuned. This is one of my favorite topics. If you're new to me and this is the first time we're connecting, my name is Julia Christina and I'm a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and an online course creator. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I work to help men and women get through the crap that is holding them back so they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And mentally tough people, how do they do it? Yeah, it is true that some people are just born with a more kind of robust personality that they are just sort of born with a little bit more of that sort of even keeledness where things don't really bother them quite as much either way. They don't necessarily get super excited. They don't necessarily get super down or depleted. But for the rest of us who are more emotional people, and like I said about being more of a highly sensitive person, if that's a new term for you, but you think you might be a more highly sensitive person, I have a whole video explaining what that is and how to know if you are a highly sensitive person. I'm going to put the link below. So make sure you go and watch that right after you watch this video. But if you are a more highly sensitive person, things do hurt you more deeply. And the reason why I'm so interested in this topic is because like I said, I'm a more highly sensitive person. And so I wanted to learn how to not let certain things bother me quite so much. So I've been doing a lot of research on mental toughness and how to become more mentally tough. And what I wanted to know is how to not let anything bother me, how to never get knocked down. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, <laughs> I don't know which one yet, that's just not the way that it works. And there's some good news and bad news with that because the truth is, is that you can't numb out the bad without also numbing out the good. If things are not going to bother us, if we're not going to get impacted by, by tough stuff that comes at us in life, then we're not also, if we're going to learn how to just sort of block off our emotions and numb out and avoid and repress our emotions, we can't selectively numb. So that means that when we numb out the bad, we end up also numbing out the good. And so it's not about learning how to not have feelings. It's about learning how to handle things better when life dishes on us, when crap hits the fan, when things get tough, when crap gets real, learning how to take that more in stride. And so I have three ways and pick which one works better for you, maybe in different situations, different situations that are going to call for a different response. It's not a one size fits all. It's a put some things in your toolbox and keep pulling something out until you find something that works. And so when life gets hard, when things get real, how to become more mentally tough. And the first one is, and this is a huge one, and this is a skill that anyone can learn. And some people come by it more automatically, and some of us have to be more intentional about developing, developing the skill and learning this one. And that one is to become more adaptable and flexible. How to not get so stuck in our ways, not get so cling so tightly to our expectations or our ideas or how we think things need to go or what, you know, what things, how things need to turn out 
in order for us to be happy or satisfied. A lot of times that's just made up anyways. It's just a story. We say it has to go like this in order for me to be happy. It has to turn out like this in order for things to, to be good or to be okay for me. So learning how to be more flexible and adaptable. And interestingly enough, research shows that this is one of the most beneficial skills that a person can learn for happiness and well-being and just general life satisfaction is learning how to be more adaptable and flexible and how to not cling so tightly to those expectations. And one of my favorite mantras with this one, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted this a little while ago, um, but one of my favorite, favorite sayings with this one, it's a mantra that I re repeat to myself when I get too kind of clingy and controlly about things. The mantra is, things don't have to go my way in order for me to be okay. I'm gonna repeat that one again because it's a really powerful one to let sink in. Things don't have to go my way in order for me to be okay. And when we're able to kind of roll with things a little bit better than, than certain things, when they come at us in life, they don't slay us, they don't knock us down quite so hard. When things don't go as we expect them to, we don't get quite so bothered by it if we can learn how to be and practice being more adaptable and flexible. The next one, and this kind of goes along a little bit with that same adapt adaptability and flexibility, is learning how to detach from the outcome or at least become less attached to the outcome. A lot of the time we go through life kind of insisting that something needs to go a certain way and we think that we're only going to be okay if it goes that certain way and we cling to it and we push and we fight and we stress and we sacrifice in order to get that particular outcome and then when we don't get it we get totally slayed. We get we get we get knocked down. We get we fall on our face. We get a mouthful of dirt and we maybe even lay there and have a little tantrum and say, why? This is not okay. I can't handle this. This is too painful. This is too difficult. It didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. And it's okay to, it's, it's okay. It's great to have goals. It's great to have dreams, but not in isolation. It's not about just wanting to focus all of our energy or not putting all of our energy and all of our emotions into the outcome. It's also about learning how to be more present in the process because the truth is most of life is process most of life is the journey we get to the outcome we we, we reach the goal and it feels good for a minute or two before we say what what do we say okay what's next we barely even reach the goal or in, or been able to like smile and laugh and feel good and grateful about reaching that goal before we're saying okay what's next and so learning how to not be so attached to that outcome and be more present and grounded and, and find the joy and the gratitude and the goodness in the process is going to help us not be so tied to that outcome. And, and great if the outcome is great, but fine if, you know, a little more fine if it isn't because we haven't put all of our eggs into that outcome basket so it doesn't slay us quite so much if it doesn't turn out the way that we thought it should or wanted it to or, or believed it could. The next one, and this is one of my favorite ones for mental toughness, and this came up again and again and again in the research that I was doing about it, is like I said, we can't turn off our emotions. We can't not be affected by things. When we numb out the bad, we also end up numbing out the good. We can't selectively numb. numb. And so regardless of how enlightened or emotionally mature or how grounded you become as a human being, there are still going to be certain things that slay you, that knock you on your butt, things, unexpected things, things you weren't planning for, or whatever it is. There are going to be times where life kicks you in the butt. You're going to get knocked down, but to be more mentally tough, mentally tough people learn how to become more bouncy. They learn how to be more resilient. They learn how to get back up. When life gets hard, they allow themselves to be impacted by it, to, to, to feel disappointed, discouraged, depleted, frustrated, upset, but they don't stay there. They figure out and they learn how to get themselves 
back up because then if we know that we can get back up, then we have a lot more courage to face and do and take on tough things and to take risks and to put ourselves out there and live more fully because we're not, it's not that, you know, failure isn't an option. Failure can always happen, but we can learn how to become more resilient so that we can get back up. And chances are, you know, well, actually the truth is, is that if you put yourself out there big enough and long enough, you're gonna get your butt kicked. You're gonna fall on your face. You're gonna get, you're gonna fall down and it's gonna hurt. And building mental toughness means that we learn how to become more resilient and how to get back up. I have a free document for you. It's a download, it's an audio exercise, a guided mindfulness exercise, 10 minute guided mindfulness exercise that you can download after this video and listen to and that is one thing that really when I talked about detaching from outcomes and just learning how to not attach so much to our thoughts and our overthinking and all the ideas and stories and beliefs that we have in our head that aren't always all that helpful this exercise is really going to give you a good start to that it's going to be a really powerful one for that it's a 10 minute guided mindfulness exercise you can grab that I'll put the link below so make sure that you grab that before you go like the video, share your comments in the comments section below. What helps you build mental toughness? What helps you feel a lot stronger and more courageous and brave to be able to go out and handle and deal with and put yourself out there in life and live more fully? What helps you be able to do that? I'd love to hear in the comments section below. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Let's stay connected. Come and join my Facebook group, goodformegroup.com, full of men and women who are heart-centered, go-getters, people who lead from the heart, who are sensitive and caring and loving and giving and feeling, deep feeling, men and women who are not willing to give up and throw in the towel ever. They're really good at learning how to and working on exactly what we're talking about, getting back up when we get knocked down. So mental toughness, it's a tough one. <laughs> But using these skills is really going to help us become more mentally tough to be able to handle what life has for us. Thank you so much for being here. So good to connect with you. Until next time, take good care.